good to have you back for the second part of this video um, solving quadratic equations but in this part we'll be focusing on completing the square I just want to explain to you why it's important to develop this as a skill because if you can't complete the squares you will struggle when you start sketching the curves of parabolas of all conic sections okay because sometimes that's the only way you will know what the center of the conic section is or the vertex or the directrix you might have to restructure the quadratic that you have no matter how crazy it looks okay now let's go into this I have an example here x squared plus 6x this is not an equation it's an expression but let me make it an equation but I'm gonna work on this part and explain to you why you need to make it um, a square because right now this is not a square look at this so let's say this is the quadratic equation that we have and we're trying to solve it I'm sure we can solve this without completing any square okay we can solve this clearly okay but I want to show you what it means because of when it gets more complicated okay so let's solve this based on what we did in the first part well I'm going to collect like terms uh, maybe I should make this negative so it's easier okay so we'll make this negative and then we have um, x so the factor we have x into x minus 6 equals 0 so our two possible answers are x equals 0 or um, x minus 6 equals 0 so you have x equals 0 or 6 okay these are the two possible answers okay so if I can do this why do I have to complete the squares well this is easy to do because we only have two terms but let's say you are required to use completing the squares just to develop the skill what were you supposed to do well if you look at the second line remember that this is what a rectangle looks like one side is always bigger than the other side and that's exactly what you have when you multiply two terms and they're not exactly the same thing what you have is a rectangle not a square the only time you have a square is when both sides are exactly the same so what you're trying to do is create an expression on the left hand side where the two things you're multiplying are exactly the same or it's just say x squared or x minus 6 squared but you don't have one thing multiplying a different thing so how do we create a square out of a rectangle and that's it so you want to make a square out of this well you have to tell yourself what will be the length of each side how will I share this axis part so that if I add it here it will give me a square you have to figure that out but there's a very easy way to do it and what we do is I'm going to run through it using this example by completing the square this is a very simple example so we have x squared plus 6x is equal to 0 okay I'm gonna be adding something here and this is based on mathematical research and discoveries and genius the best thing to add to an expression to make it a square is to look at this term the B term okay divided by 2 what's half of this number it's 3 okay make a square out of that 3 you got you're gonna get a 9 and that's it so to complete the square divide B by 2 oh firstly this must be 1 the term here must be 1 there can't be anything sitting here okay so for you to use completing the squares you must have a being 1 if a is not 1 well you have to first divide through by that constant so that what you have here will be 1 so remember that it's very important so you know what? I'm gonna write the expression so I'm gonna write the steps be sure that leading coefficient is positive 1 that um, a is equal to 1 okay that's we get a check mark for that okay so I'm gonna write it x squared plus 6x is equal to 0 the second thing is make sure that the constant has been moved over to the other side okay that's important in fact that's the first thing you should do okay but since we don't have it uh, in this case so the next thing now to do okay is to take half of B and square the result so you want to take half of B this is your B remember the middle term take half of it if you take half of it and you square the result in this case it just, it's gonna be 6 over 2 squared which will be 3 squared which will be 9 you see this 9 is all you've been looking for okay now this 9 you just got is what you're gonna add to this and add to this you always add it doesn't matter whether the sign is positive or negative you always add because even if this was negative 6 and you divide you get negative 3 by the time you square negative 3 you're gonna get a positive so you always add okay so our new expression is now x squared plus 6x plus 9 is equal to you have to add that 9 also to this side plus 9 okay so you have 9 added to both sides so you haven't changed anything because you can go back to the original equation by just subtracting 9 from both sides so nothing has changed but the good news is that 
By doing that, you have created a perfect square here. How do you know? Well, this can be factored into x plus 3 squared. How do you know it's a, how do you know the answer here is 3? Well, that's the root, that number you got when you divided this by 2 is always the number that's going to be here. And it's always the root of this constant term. So there are many ways you can tell yourself, I know what number to put here. So it's always half of this, and it's always the square root of this. Remember that. That's the number that will be here. Half of b or the square root of this. Okay, so now you have this. We have rewritten this now as a square, and this also is here. So now we can just take the square root of both sides, and we're good. So we can say that x plus 3 is equal to plus or minus the square root of 9. Okay, so you have x plus 3 equals plus or minus 3. So let's solve this. Now we can say x equals, if you move this over, you have negative 3 plus or minus 3. Okay, remember that you have two possible answers. You have x equals negative 3 plus 3, or x equals negative 3 minus 3. So you have x equals 0 or negative 6. Those are the two possible answers. If you do completing the squares, well, oh, this was a different question. Okay, so I see how they differ. So the reason why this 6 is negative in this case is because we, I changed the sign here, okay? But that's fine. But you got the principle, you got the order, okay? That's how it works. The only thing that will be different, okay, in the two other examples I'm going to take will be that you're going to have a C here or A is not going to be 1. Those are the extra steps you need to take and you will understand this by the time we are done with this video. So I have another simple example here. Remember, there is no point trying to use completing the squares if you know you can factor, okay? I know I can factor this expression, but I'm using this example so that you can solve it both by using completing the squares and by factoring and seeing uh, that you get the same answer. And also it's easier to deal with because we get rational roots. Okay, so look at this. Um, what do we do? The first step, I'm going to write the steps now, is move C to the other side. That's the first step you must always take. Move the C to the other side. So I'm left with n squared minus 8n will be equal to negative 12. The next term I look at is, check out what is here. Is this 1? Yes. Okay. If it's 1, you don't have any problems. Okay? So you want to add um, half of this squared to both sides. So the next step is add b over 2 squared to both sides. So if I were you, I would quickly do this math. What is b over 2? Well, b is negative 8. Okay, so that means I'm going to have to add negative 8 over 2 squared. Okay, what does that give me? Well, negative 8 over 2 is negative 4. What is the square of negative 4? That's going to be 16. So 16 is what I need to add to both sides. So I'm going to go here and say n squared minus 8n plus 16 equals negative 12 plus 16. You have to add the same thing to both sides. Now, remember, once you add that, the result of this, what you have here is already a perfect square. You don't need to think. You just need to rewrite this as if you factored it. It's always n minus, we use minus because there's a minus here. And what number will you put here? It's always the square root of this or half of this. It's always. And the sign you keep is the sign that was in the question from the beginning. Okay? It's the same sign. So it's 4. You square it. Now we can do our arithmetic. What's negative 12 plus 16? Yeah. 4. So now we can take the square root of both sides. We have n minus 4 will be plus or minus square root of 4, which would be... Um, Two. We've taken the square root of both sides. That's what we do next. Okay, and now we can get our answer. So n will be equal to, move 4 over it to be 4 plus or minus 2. So n will be 4 plus 2 or 4 minus 2. So your answer will be 6 or 2. Okay, those are the two possible answers, which you could have gotten by factoring. Okay, so I use this example because it's easy to get. We're going to get to examples now that require some fractions and some crazy answers. This is a third example, and I chose this again, or I made it up because I know you can factor it and check your answer when you're done. But let's do completing the squares. Remember, the first step to do is to move this away to the other side. So we're going to go to 2y squared plus 3y equals 5. Okay. Um, so the next thing we want to do is make sure that this is 1, and the only way to ensure this is 1 is to divide through by 2. So I'm going to divide each of the terms by 2. Divide by 2, divide by 2, divide by 2. Well, I end up with y squared plus 3 over 2y equals 5 over 2. Ah, this doesn't look beautiful because we have fractions. Well, we don't have a problem with fractions because we know fractions. Okay, so the next step is to take half of this. What is half of 3 halves? Well, it's 3 fourths. 
Well, do the math yourself, okay? So, and that's it. So, if you take half of this, you're going to get 3 over 4. That's what you get when you take half of this. Now, when you square this, you're going to get 9 over 16. Now, this is what you add to both sides, okay? So, it's going to be y squared plus 3 over 2y plus 9 over 16 equals, see, I just added it, equals 5 over 2 plus 9 over 16. Now, remember, you don't, as soon as you add this result here, you don't have to worry yourself about how to simplify this. You don't need to simplify. Just assume you factored it and write it as the variable plus what was half of this that you got? That thing you squared, this one. Okay, 3 over 4. That's it. Squared equals, now this is what you need to do your fraction work on. Okay, so if we simplify this, well, if you multiply this by 8, it's going to give you 16, 16. This is going to be 40, so that's 40 plus 9, 49 over 16. 49 over 16. Okay, now we can take the square root of both sides. If you take the square root of this side, you're going to end up with plus or minus 7 over 4. Please don't go into your calculator to start punching and getting some crazy irrational, I mean crazy decimal. Leave the decimals alone. Leave your answers like this. So here, we're taking the square root of this side, then we have y plus 3 over 4. So now we can move this over to this side, and life is beautiful. Okay, so what you have here is going to be y equals negative 3 over 4 plus or minus 7 over 4. And I'm sure you can see that this is going to give you y equals negative 3 over 4 plus 7 over 4 is going to be 4 over 4, which is 1. Or y equals negative 3 um, minus, so that's um, negative 10 over 4. So that's negative 10 over 4, that's negative 5 over 2. So those are the two possible answers, okay, when you simplify this. So that's it. Don't forget, we could have factored this expression from the beginning, okay? Factored this and you would get the same answer. Okay, y will be 1 or negative 5 over 2. One more example, and I'll be done with completing the squares. Let's do it. This question is one of those questions you will need completing the squares for, or you'll have to get your quadratic formula, okay? Because you cannot factor this. So that's why you need to know how to complete the square, or how to use the completing the square formula, which is the quadratic formula. Okay, so look at this. Um, yeah, we just have to follow the same process. I'm just going to solve it, you follow. 3x squared plus x will be equal to 5. And then I'm going to make sure this is um, 1 by dividing through by 3. So I'm going to divide this by 3, divide this by 3, divide this by 3. So I'm left with x squared plus 1 over 3x equals, um, what do I have here? 5 over 3. Now the next thing is to take half of this. What's half of 1 third? It's going to be 1 sixth, okay? Um, I might just go two steps down here, okay? This is going to be x you know, let me get up here, that's going to be x plus 1 6 because that's it, okay? In the middle of it, see, I just skipped a step because I know what's going to be happening. What would I write here in the next step? It's going to be x squared plus 1 over 3x plus the square of half of this, which is 1 6. The square of 1 6 will be 1 over 36, and that's what I'm adding to both sides. 5 over 3 plus 1 over 36. See, I already wrote the third step, okay, or two steps away from that because I know that half of this is what's going to be here, which is 1 over 6, but it's going to be squared. Now I need to add these two together. Well, let's do our addition. Um, this is going to be, multiply this by 12. 5 times 12 is 60. 60 plus 1 is 61, okay, over 36. Okay, now I can take the square root of both sides, which is going to be um, x plus 1 over 6 will be plus or minus square root of 61 over 36. Well, I know the square root of 36 to be 6, so I can deal with that. Okay, so I can write this as x equals, when this moves over, it's going to be negative 1 over 6 plus or minus square root of 61 over 6. Now, you often get this like this. These two almost always look alike, so you can just do addition or subtraction. It's just the way it works. Almost always, these two denominators will be the same, okay? Um, unless you're getting a crazy quadratic equation, which I think uh, will be crazy in itself, okay? And that tells you that x equals, that's negative 1 plus that over, so we're going to say it's going to be negative 1 plus square root of 61 over 6, or it's going to be negative 1 minus square root of 61 over 6. So whichever answer you like, pick. And that's it for completing the squares. I will, in the next video, I'm going to show you um, how to obtain the quadratic equation and how to use it. It's the easiest part of everything we're doing. See you in the next video. Never stop learning, because those who stop learning will stop living.